That's why all the research is saying we shouldn't be doing it's just some guy a long time ago did it on one guy and a whole bunch of dead people hanging upside down. This doesn't help us. How's it guys? So welcome back. Today we will be doing cricord pressure. My name is James and this is that med guy. In case you don't have five minutes to watch the whole video, you don't need to do cricord pressure. There's other stuff that works better and it doesn't actually work anyway. We're going to just discuss what is cricord pressure, what does this have to do with us, and what we should be doing about it. Cricord pressure came out of a study quite a while ago where one man took a bunch of cadavers and filled their stomachs up with saline, turned them upside down, held pressure on their cricord pressure, held pressure on the cricord, held pressure on their cricord cartilage, and no saline came out of their stomachs. That's pretty much what we're basing it on. And then Silix then the next year released another paper where he held cricoid pressure on one person and they didn't aspirate. I'll link that down to the bottom. And yes, you heard me right. One person. Cricoid pressure we do to stop passive regurgitation. You know, you'll be doing an RSI or intubation and someone will say, hold cricoid pressure. There are so many issues with this. A long time ago, the AHA said, we're not really recommending cricoid pressure because the evidence is not sound. In fact, there is a lot of evidence saying we shouldn't be doing cricoid pressure, not the opposite. What exactly is cricoid pressure? For those who aren't aware of this, you should probably stay naive about it. But so you take your fingers and you push on the cricoid cartilage and you hold down 44 newtons of pressure. That is in layman's terms, four kilograms of pressure on your throat. Uh, as you can imagine, this doesn't help you breathe or anything, but stops fluid from coming out of your stomach if your feet are above your head, which is not really going to help us in our situation. What they are saying is that this stops passive regurgitation and because we don't want our patients to aspirate while we're intubating them, we should be holding cricoid pressure. And that's what you'll hear when you hear someone tell you to do cricoid pressure. The other thing that you can do that, that actually works really well is that you just tilt the head up 20, 30 degrees and that also stops passive regurgitation because gravity pulls the stuff down. There are other uh, pressures that you can apply to the throat, uh, like the burp maneuver. So that's backwards up left pressure, backwards up right pressure, burp, how do you spell burp? And so what that is, is that then you take the crack of pressure and you put backwards, upwards, right. So the burp pressure um, pushes the trachea in line with the view of the person who's doing the intubation. Because when we intubate, we pull left. And so if you're pulling my tongue out of the way on the left, their view is down the right and we're pushing the trachea to the right. So that would be your burp. So burp is actually just a type of um, ELM, which is an external laryngeal manipulation. There are other types of ELM that we will be discussing in a moment. The studies on the uh, cricoid pressure that found was that many, many times they found that for one, ventilation was harder. They found that intubation was harder. They found that if you push down on cricoid pressure, you actually reduce the strength of the lower esophageal sphincter and this causes or this is more likely to cause you to aspirate that's one of the findings i'll link the study that i'm referring to in the notes below the other thing is that they found is that you had to ventilate harder there were higher tidal volumes needed and there were um, higher peak pressures in the airway which are all things we don't want when we're ventilating then when it came to intubation or um, laryngeal mask airways, placement was harder, placement of a bougie was made more difficult. In my own experience, I've seen cricoid pressure make an intubation harder. Don't, I don't know about you, but it's, I've never seen it being helpful. That's why all the research is saying we shouldn't be doing it's just some guy a long time ago did it on one guy and a whole bunch of dead people hanging upside down. This doesn't help us. Please. So the other thing is that when it comes to what are the alternatives? So you can do burp. So backwards, upwards, right pressure. That's one kind of ELM. Another kind of ELM that I love, and it's kind of like a modified uh, ELM. I'm not exactly sure the name, but all you do is you take your four fingers and you place it onto the patient's trachea, the whole thing, and you just push down. You just lower it down until your view improves. And I'll link a study below that speaks about how this actually improves a view by an entire grade. So a Cormac and Lahan grade, it, it drops it by an entire grade. So something that was 
quite difficult to see is now very visible or something that's quite visible it becomes very visible so the best way to perform this is to have a assistant hold on the trachea and then your hands over the trachea and you push their hand down until the view is where you want it and you tell them to hold that view because they can't see what you're seeing you let go and you pass the tube so that is pretty much the best way to go about doing this i myself have used this i have seen other people use this it has worked every time and if it doesn't work obviously just don't use it but i have also seen people using cricoid pressure and the person doing the intubation wasn't able to see anything he then asked the man to release the cricoid pressure and then he could see the trachea and he passed the tube so guys we do not need cricoid pressure what we should be doing is something like elm you can have a look at the research try it yourself guys let me know if you do use it or you've seen it used or if you're still being told by superiors that you should be using cricoid pressure it is very difficult to have these kinds of conversations. Do the research for yourself. Have these conversations with these people. Open up the discussion. Guys, I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, please hit like and subscribe. And if you have any comments, questions, or queries, drop them below. And we shall see you in the next video. Bye for now.